Well, joining me now, Texas Congressman and Freedom Watch regular Michael, Dr. Michael Burgess. Congressman Burgess, it's a pleasure. Welcome back to Freedom Watch. Thank you, Judge. It's always great to be with you. Do, do you agree with Senator John McCain and Senator Carl Levin that uh, the United States of America is a battlefield and the president should use the military for domestic law enforcement purposes, including arresting people he deems to be enemies and terrorists? The short answer is no. This bill, of course, did come through the House in the summertime. It did not have this provision. I did vote for the bill in the summertime, but when it comes back, if it's got this provision, it's, it's a no-go. And why is it a no-go, Congressman Burgess? Well, because it's just it's exactly as you articulated. You cannot have the president empowered to arrest people, American citizens, in their own country uh, without the, the rationale of due process. You know, I have voted against defense authorization bills in the past. I don't like doing it because we certainly need to support our soldiers when we send them places as a Congress. We need to be there to support them. But last year was don't ask, don't tell. Uh, the year before that, there was some other provision that was attached to this right. thing. So I've proven in the past I will vote against it if when it comes back from conference, it's got language that doesn't belong there. Well, will there be language on something I think you and I probably do agree on, and most of, our, uh, of the folks watching us now probably agree, and that is the right to carry a handgun interstate lines. Is that going to be added to the defense appropriation bill when the House finishes with it? And of course, that passed a standalone legislation in the House. I'm not sure if it will be appended to the defense authorization or perhaps a larger appropriations bill. And, Judge, that's right where we are right now. As you know, you, you cram all this stuff into the end of the year and some, some weird stuff starts ha happening, and that's really where where we are today okay. with uh, some things I care very much about, like like protecting the, the doctors so that they continue to practice in the Medicare system, but I don't want to see that looped into unemployment insurance. Understood. And that's the f Understood. Uh, should the Congress consider uh, borrowing money and sending it to the states for more unemployment insurance so that the unemployed can stay unemployed even longer? Well, it, it, right, and that is the, the difficulty. Of, it's the old adage, if you pay for unemployment, what do you get? Unemployment. Right. Uh, there, there has to be a stopping point, and, and people do need to understand. All for safety nets, all for helping people who are on hard times, but it's, it's become a way of life, and that is, that is the difficult part of this. Are, are there, is the Republican leadership, and I don't want to drive a wedge between you and leadership, but you, <laughs> you, you are far more devoted to the Constitution and the free market than some of your colleagues, without mentioning names, although their faces are coming up on the screen now. Is, is the Republican leadership afraid to take the Democrats on head-on, Congressman Burgess, on spending? You know, I don't know the answer to that question. You would have to ask the leadership. I... I, I, you know, identify myself as a pragmatist a lot of the time. I've seen a lot of pragmatism in the last couple of days, but I've also seen some things that worry me very much. So I, I don't know how to answer your question. Better posed to leadership. I wouldn't pretend to answer for them, but uh, I got some worries. Last year, the House uh, banned earmarks. Now they're back. Where's this going to go? I, well, I don't think that, if they are back, they shouldn't be because the promise was, that was made to each rank and file who said we should no longer do earmarks is that they would not sneak back in through the back door in a chairman's office or a subcommittee chairman's office. Remember, earmarks were the reform 20 years ago, because in the old days it was just a subcommittee chairman who would, who would direct these funds. But earmarks were abused. The privilege was voided by the American people who told us in no uncertain terms, you can't do that anymore. And in my opinion, the Congress should not be doing that anymore. Got it. Congressman Michael Burgess, always a pleasure. Thanks for joining us. Yes, sir. Thank you.